My name is Scott Stull, and this presentation will be on Roman cheesemaking. We have a description of the Roman cheesemaking process from Columella in Res Rustica, or On Agriculture, in Book 7, Part 8. This was written in about 65 AD or CE. There are two versions of, uh, or two approaches to making cheese. One where the uh, um, milk is curdled with rennet or a variety of other things such as wild thistle, seeds of safflower, fig sap, um, green pine kernels, and thyme. <clears throat> and then it sits near a fire and then gets transferred either into wicker vessels or to mold. The second version is where the milk is thickened and then hot water is poured over it and then it's shaped either by hand or pressed into boxwood molds. Both of these approaches were used in this testing. Modern cheesemaking typically uses rennet and an acid. An exception to that is the Spanish dairy product Cuajada, um, and this is a, an example here that just uses rennet. How rennet works is it strips water from the milk proteins, casein, and allows those proteins to clump. It's an enzymatic action. It doesn't work below 65 degrees Fahrenheit or above 110 Fahrenheit. It doesn't work if the milk is alkaline. It needs to be acidic. Milk is naturally slightly acidic, 6.5 to 6.7 pH, but it can vary due to a range of causes. The more acidic the um, milk is, that means the faster coagulation, and if it's too acidic, can lead to hard, rubbery curds. For this set of experiments, I used a sous vide water bath or an immersion heater. This allowed me to have precise control over temperature and gave me control over the amount of time at any given temperature. Roman cheese molds can be found in museum collections, such as this one from the Eshmolian Museum. I made a modern replica fired to cone 06, which is about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit or 980 Celsius. Unlike the ceramic cheese molds, we don't have much in the way of preserved Roman basketry. We do have images, however, um, such as this one from Pompeii. And I contacted a friend of mine who's a basket maker, and she made some baskets modeled on those of the Roman era. The first experimental test used modern standard cheesemaking techniques using cheese culture and rennet in one quart of milk. Both the cheese mold and the basket were used to have a standard to compare to. To test Columella's recipe, I made a batch of cheese with only rennet. The curd was not as firm as the rennet and culture version, and that's not unexpected, but the cheese production was effective. This and subsequent tests used a slow rising temperature to 94 degrees Fahrenheit in the cheese making process. This softer curd was ladled into the baskets, and one consequence was that there was a slight loss of curd through the, the weaving of the basketry because the curd was so soft. The drained curd was pressed to remove the additional whey. I used a modern plastic follower so you have something pressing down evenly on the top of the curd to expel the whey. I used a platform press at about 10 pounds of pressure which is a very soft pressing. This level of pressing is appropriate for a soft cheese, which is eaten as a fresh rather than an aged cheese. This level of pressing had a minor loss of curd through the basketry and more cheese remaining in the wicker of the basket. I expect that with higher levels of weight, there would have been a much more dramatic loss of curd, which is one of the reasons I did not proceed to a higher weight in pressing. The Roman recipe following Columella, using just rennet, produced an effective soft cheese 
and the bass get allowed at least mild uh, pressing to produce a good, soft, fresh cheese. Kalamala says that pine kernels and thyme were used to promote curdling and flavor. Kalamala also goes on to say you could give the cheese any flavor you like by adding seasoning, which you choose. These herbs, and nearly any herbs, have a pH in the 5.5 to 6.5 range, so they do add an acidic component that contributes to curdling in cheese making. To test the contribution to curdling, thyme was crushed in a mortar and added to the milk. The curd was still relatively soft at first, but by the point of being ladled into the basket had become firmer than we saw with just rennet. The cheese with thyme leaves in it had a very pleasant flavor. Calamella said to pound and sieve the thyme, where I only crushed it in a mortar. The texture of the thyme leaves in the otherwise very soft cheese was a bit distracting. If I did this again, or if someone wants to try this, I recommend following Calamella's approach and sieving the thyme. The firmer curd did not cling to the basket like the rennet only test, which is a good indication of the effectiveness of thyme as a curdling agent. Another batch was made with pine nuts. Um, I don't have access to green pine kernels, so I used commercially available pine nuts. I chopped them roughly, which is how Columella describes it, and added them to the milk to see what their contribution to curd production was. Like the other variants in this experiment, follow the same temperature regime starting at 84, raising to 94, using rennet with pine nuts. And this made a much softer curd than with thyme, um, possibly even slightly softer than with rennet alone, um, but it did again firm up a little bit as it uh, spent more time in the, the higher temperature. This batch was put into the ceramic mold and it's very clear how slowly the whey drains out of the ceramic mold compared to the basket. This cheese was put into the, the platform press and the first pressing was with 10 pounds. This cheese was finished with pressing with 40 pounds of weight. Uh, this is a, a typical approach to cheese making of increasing weight with subsequent uh, pressing effects. And this weight is common for uh, the semi-hard cheeses comparable to Derby and those others that this particular temperature regime is also modeling. Even with 40 pounds of, of pressure, there was minimal loss of curd through the drainage holes um, in the ceramic cheese mold, which is a very clear indication to me that the Roman cheese making that says they keep adding weight and adding weight and adding weight could very easily stand up to this much pressure to remove the way to allow for aging and shipping from this kind of vessel. The pressed cheese with pine nuts looks fairly similar to the cheese that came unpressed out of the mold, except there are fewer gaps or cavities because of the greater pressure and in this case, the slightly smaller curd size. The flavor of the cheese with pine nuts was, was unusual. Um, it's not what we expect from modern cheeses, and um, it's, it was not particularly popular with my taste testers. The experiment was continued with higher temperatures rather than a slow rise from 85 to 90, from 84 to 94, which just went directly to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and then a second batch at 100 Fahrenheit. These were both rennet only. The 95 
temperature is on the left and the 100 temperature is on the right. The curd production was quite similar um, in both cases to the, the rennet at the, the slow rise up to 94, but there are slight differences. Columella's second approach of adding hot water to the curds was also tried. At first, the temperature of the water was low at 120, and then 150, and then 170. 170 was chosen because that's the temperature that mozzarella is heated to. While this did not follow the, the full set of techniques to produce mozzarella, it did make a more cohesive curd, as you see here on the right. As I do not have a boxwood mold to work with, I shaped by hand and I made a, uh, a sphere like a small fresh mozzarella ball. The higher temperature of, of um, curd production led to smaller cheeses with less whey. And the left was at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The right is at 100 degrees Fahrenheit and the ball in the back was the one that was raised up um, with the addition of hot water to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. The cheese was not heated that hot. This is an advantage in that there's less whey, but a disadvantage um, that you get less cheese. This study in Roman cheese making um, revealed that the use of an acid with rennet gives the best curds, and that's the system that we have today. But rennet alone is entirely successful and just makes a softer curd. The addition of herbs improves the quality of the curd from just having rennet only, but it does change the flavor. In terms of the difference between the ceramic mold and the basket, the mold is more effective at retaining the pressed curd, but holds less curd to be used. The basket holds more curd and drains more easily. One significant point is that you don't need cheesecloth or any kind of cloth liner for either of these. Many Roman cheese making replications use cheesecloth in the production and because cheesecloth is easy and that's used very widely in modern cheese making but the Roman the replicated Roman ceramic mold and the Roman replicated basket do not need a cloth liner for the effective retention of curds in the production of cheese. The final observation is that higher temperatures make smaller, firmer curds, which is something of an advantage um, in terms of production when you only are using rennet. Thank you for your attention. This is Scott Stull.